Let's look at finding percentiles using the standard normal table. And in this video, I'm going to investigate tables that look like this. In other words, tables that give the area between zero and Z, this thing. Another common type of table is this that gives the area to the left. I'm not going to look at this in this video. I have another video for that one. And in this video, we are going to be looking at finding the value of Z for a given area. And when we are given Z and we need an area, I have a different video for that one. Suppose Z is a random variable with a standard normal distribution. What is the value Z0 such that the probability Z lies between 0 and Z0 is 0 0.3531? Well, first we should draw our standard normal curve. Our standard normal curve looks a little something like this. Bell-shaped curve, symmetric about zero, and the area under the entire curve is one. And what we are trying to find here is the value Z naught, such that the area between zero and Z naught is 0 0.3531. That's what we want to find. The probability the random variable z falls between 0 and z0 is simply the area under the curve between 0 and z0. So we need the value of z that makes this happen. This type of table looks like this, where it's giving the area between 0 and z. We need this to be 0 0.3531, and the areas are given in the body of the table here. The values of z are given on the edges. Here's the first decimal place of z. Here's the second decimal place of z. We're not going to be looking at 0.35 over this way. That's not how we do it, because this is an area. So we look up areas in the body of the table, and here we go. We find the appropriate area there, 0 0.3531, that is corresponding to a Z value of 1.05. So the Z value that makes that happen is 1.05. This value of z is 1.05, or in other words, the probability random variable z falls between 0 and 1.05 is 0 0.3531. Now another important tidbit of information that we're going to need to use is the fact that the curve is symmetric about zero. So if we were to draw this out, another bit of information we could glean from what we just did is if we had this other value here at minus 1.05, the area between that and zero is also 0 0.3531 because the standard normal distribution is symmetric about zero. And the table does not give negative values of z, it only gives positive values of z because we can always figure out the negative side using the symmetry about zero argument. So let's look at an example of that. What is the value Z0 such that the probability Z is bigger than Z0 is 0.8023? We're going to draw our standard normal curve. It's going to look something like this. Here's 0. 0 has an area to the right of a half and an area to the left of a half. And the probability Z is greater than Z0 is 0.8023. Or in other words, the area to the right of Z0 is... 0 0.8023. Now this is going to be a negative value because it must lie to the left of 0. So we're not going to be able to find that in the table. We're going to have to find the corresponding value on the right side. So if we use the symmetry argument here and say here at 0, over here the absolute value of Z0, so in other words if we got rid of the minus sign, the area to the left must be 0 0.8023. So we're going to find this value, then tack on a minus sign, and that'll be this value. Now we can't go running off to our table just yet either. We can't look up 0 0.8023 because our table gives us the area between 0 and the z value we look up. And so the area between 0 and uh, the absolute value of z0, what's this going to be? Well, we know the area to the left of 0 is a half. And so this must be 0 0.8023 minus a half, or in other words, 0 0.3023. Now we have a picture that looks like our table, and now we can go to our table and look up that value. So 0 0.3023 was an area, and we find areas in the body of the table, so we're looking here, and we can find 0 0.3023 right there, and that is corresponding to a z value of 0 0.85. 
So at 0 0.85, 0 0.85, the area here is 0 0.3023. That's what the table's telling me. So over here, the absolute value of Z0 had to be 0 0.85. We found that from the table, which means that this value over here is minus 0 0.85. Or in other words, the probability the random variable Z is greater than minus 0 0.85 is 0 0.8023. So this minus 0.85 is the value Z0 satisfying this. What is the value Z0 such that the probability Z lies between minus Z0 and Z0 is 0.95? Again, we draw our picture. Here's 0 in the middle. Over here somewhere is some value Z0. Over here somewhere is some value minus Z0. And what we're saying is that the probability that Z lies between those values, or in other words, the area under the curve between those two values, is 0 0.95. How am I going to find that? Well, let's think about this a little bit. The curve is symmetric about 0, so this area here and this area here are equal, and we need to make ours look like the table. So we know that... If we draw this picture here with 0 and Z0, that this area simply has to be half of 0.95, or 0.475. And that looks just like our table. So we can look up this area in the table. So we're looking up 0.475 in the body of the table here. I'm looking around until I can find that, and I'm going to find, oh, here we go, here it is. And that's corresponding to the value 1.96. So the table tells me that this value is 1.96, and I also know that this value over here is minus 1.96. Or in other words, we know that the probability that the random variable z takes on a value between minus 1.96 and 1.96 is 0 0.95. And this is actually going to be an important value for us in statistical inference a little later on. What is the 60th percentile of the standard normal distribution? Again, we draw our picture. Here's 0 in the middle. And the 60th percentile is the value of the variable that yields 60% of the area to the left. So there's some value here that yields 60% of the area to the left. And this value is the 60th percentile. And that's what we want to find. Okay, well I can't look up 0.6 because the table gives me the area between 0 and Z. So what I'm going to have to do is translate this and I need the area between 0 and this value. I know the area over here is 0 0.5. The area to the left of 0 is 0 0.5. And so just this bit has to be 0 0.10. So I'm going to look this up in the table. So we're looking up the area here in the middle, trying to get as close as we can to 0 0.10. And we've got this one and this one, and this one is a little bit closer to 0.1. That is corresponding to a Z value of 0.25. For most typical problems, I think choosing the closest value is fine. If we needed a little more precision, we'd throw it into a computer and get a more precise answer. Some people have different attitudes about these things, but I say pick the closest value in the table. That's good enough for me. So 0 0.25 is approximately our 60th percentile. Now, what about the 40th percentile? Let's say we did this. Why am I bringing this up? Because this is going to be easy for us. The 40th percentile is going to be the value over here somewhere that gives 40% of the area to the left. And then, of course, 10% of the area between 0 and that value. So what is that value going to be? Well, wait a minute. We just figured the value out over here. 0.25 has an area of 0.1 between it and 0. So by the symmetry argument, this must be minus 0 0.25. And so minus 0 0.25 is approximately the 40th percentile. And since our table only gives us positive values of z, we're going to have to use that symmetry argument frequently, looking at values on the positive side and then tacking on a negative value when that's necessary.